Hey, today we are talking about color space in printing photos and art uh, using inkjet printers, aqueous inkjet printers. I've done a video before on color space and I basically just said use Adobe RGB 1998. Um, I don't 100% agree with that anymore. I've learned some more stuff. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with people, so I wanted to do kind of an update video that goes a little bit more in depth and shows some examples. Now, the hardest thing about this is the internet and your screen is not going to be able to show you the same colors that I am seeing on prints. So I'm going to add the file to the downloads or to the comments section and you can download it yourself. Um, or you just have to take my word for it. <laughs> um, so I kind of want to start by saying I th this all kind of started my my reapproach to this started with uh, seeing somebody post on Reddit in the in a for in a subreddit asking about file prep and what color space their image should be when they're sending it off to be printed. And I was really surprised by the responses and by the reactions I got to my response. So the first several responses all said CMYK. That goes against everything I've ever done. I never print in CMYK. Uh, so I said that and a bunch of people jumped down my throat. So I took that and I went to some other forums and talked to some other people and had some pretty good conversations. And <laughs> basically everybody said something different. Um, I'm going to start by saying there's different ways of printing in different parts of the industry. Somebody using a printing press prints very different than I print. I don't use printing presses. Um, so I'm not going to speak to that. I use large format and a couple small format um, photo and art printing machines. Now yes, all printers print in CMYK. CMYK is four colors, um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is for black because they add black to expand it. Um, my printers take 12 inks, two blacks, but expanded CMYK colors. My small format Epson uses different colors than my large format Canons. Now they use these extra colors to print an expanded gamut beyond regular CMYK. Now your camera shoots in Profoto RGB um, and that's a much larger color gamut than CMYK. And the one down from that is Adobe RGB 1998, which is what I've printed in in the past. The next basic of the four we're talking about today is sRGB. Now sRGB is what you're basically going to see in this video. You're going to see um, a much limited color space that is what is on the internet. Uh, it's what most of our computer monitors show. Um, so when you're looking at your images on your computer monitor, you are not seeing a lot of color gamut that your eyes can see and that my printers can print. So I'm gonna start with my printers and people telling me that I should be printing in CMYK. Going by Canon's specific instructions and everybody I've ever spoken to in the field that I am in, these printers are designed for an RGB input. So they are designed for files that are prepped and are in an RGB color space. The print driver, after you send the file to the printer, is going to convert that back to this expanded CMYK, knowing what it has for these extra colors, and it's gonna allow you to print the widest possible gamut possible. If you shrink your file to CMYK before you send it to the printer, which none of these printer manufacturers want you to do, you're gonna get some funky colors. Not as funky as I thought when, when I saw my test, but you get some funky colors. sRGB is what 95% of images that come to my shop come in, and it's shocking because it's the worst one. 
even professionals, the vast majority of photographers, of designers, of artists, people who scan their own files, people who photograph their own files, all send me files in sRGB. And that sucks because they're losing a ton of color gamut. And I've tried posting videos, I've tried posting on Instagram, I've tried doing everything I can to alert people. Do not work in sRGB, please. Now, one of the forums that I was in actually went one step further, and a couple people agreed with this, that when you are using a printer like mine and you know your media and you have specific ICC profiles provided by the vendor or the paper manufacturer, you should convert your image back to that ICC profile before you print. Now, I've talked to a couple um, paper manufacturers that say, don't do that. That's a really archaic way of thinking. Um, you're limiting yourself. You're gonna add a bunch more work because every file is gonna have to be in a different profile for every different media you use. When you could just put it in one profile that's larger than that gamut, and just have everything stay in that. So I'm gonna show you some visual representations. And what I did to do these tests is I got this image. This is an image provided by the digital dog, digitaldog.net. He's a crazy smart color guy on the internet, has tons of awesome resources. I'll post a link to this file in the description below. This file is in Profoto RGB 16 bit. Digital Dog says print everything in Profoto, not Adobe RGB, which is what I've said. My concern with printing in Profoto is you are going to be printing colors that I cannot see on my screen. So my screen is fancy. Um, because I do this for a living, my screen sh is very expensive and shows our Adobe RGB 1998. So I can see a lot of colors on my screen that you cannot see in yours. Now Profoto, like I just said, is gonna print colors that I cannot see on mine. That makes me a little bit nervous. I feel like using Adobe RGB 1998, the differences are gonna be very minor and it's a standard. It's something that every shop that I know that does what I do has used in the past. Granted, I don't know a ton of sh other shops, um, but it's just an industry standard and it keeps us all like we're printing what we can see. It's gonna make it easier when I'm printing artwork for me to really look at the colors and look at my screen and know what I'm gonna get. If I'm having trouble doing a reproduction, I could see going back to Profoto RGB, which is where my master files will always stay and printing from that because it's gonna get me a slightly larger gamut. So getting back, what I did was I got that image and I printed it four times. Uh, it starts in Profoto RGB. I converted it in Photoshop to Adobe RGB 1998, ran a print, converted it to sRGB and converted it to CMYK and printed all four of those. And I'm gonna look at them side by side. Again, you're not gonna be able to see the differences. You'll be able to see some but not nearly as um, vividly as I'm gonna be able to see them on my prints. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you a page that somebody shared with me during all of this that shows you a 3D graph chart of color spaces. And you can input an ICC profile so I can sh input a paper and I can compare it to all of these different color spaces I'm talking about, and it will show you what the media manufacturer, their ICC profile that they have created for my machine, it's gonna show you what that profile says it can print with my machine versus the standard profiles that you can use in Photoshop. So, if you're still watching, you're a color nerd like I am, um, there's some good stuff to come, so let's go for it. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. Uh, this is a photograph I took of the four prints I made. The lighting was not 100% perfect. You can see it's a little bit lighter up in the upper right-hand corner here, but that is okay for, for the general idea. Now, the other thing I did is my BenQ SW321C allows me to change color profiles. So 
I changed my monitor profile to sRGB because that is most likely what you're looking at on your screen. Um, and sRGB is this limited color space. So the stuff that I'm seeing in my prints, um, unless you see my print, you're not really seeing it. So when analyzing these, I wanted to be looking at what basically you are looking at. Uh, so I'm looking at it in sRGB. Now, the most obvious thing I'm going to point out right away is this cyan in the sRGB versus the cyan in Pro, in Adobe, and also in CMYK. It looks very just blue in CMYK. Um, but how much more saturated it is in the Adobe 1998 and the Pro Photo. Now, Keep in mind that sRGB, this third one right here, is what 95% of my prints come to the shop in. Um, so that's pretty crazy. Now, if you look at the blue behind the fish, um, this one in Profoto has way more detail to it. It's getting kind of washed out and less saturated here. Um, these oranges in Adobe and Pro are much more saturated in this area. These magentas, look how much more violet and purple this magenta is in sRGB versus here. Same in these gradients. Like, I mean, just it's so purple. It's like a, just a completely different color. I mean, if you look at the magenta here versus the magenta here, how far off it is. Um, these look pretty similar through this area. Um, this line is a little harsher than this one. It's kind of interesting. Um, a lot of these look very similar. The blues, the greens, the reds um, look pretty close. These are just slightly less saturated. But if you knock it over to here, they look way different. Way, way different. Um, especially the magentas and cyans. Going over to CMYK, um, the red is much more, much less saturated. Just how much less saturated this is. Yeah, it's just, it's not nearly as, as good. Um, and this is horrible. I mean, to me, the sRGB is probably the worst. So that just shows you how different it is if you're giving me a file in sRGB, because you can't go back to here. Can send me an sRGB and if I convert it to Adobe 1998 it's still just gonna look like this uh, this website I will also link in the description below um, ICC view this is really cool you can compare media profiles but we can also just compare um, these standard color profiles so color space one first we're gonna start with sRGB versus Adobe 1998 now click this okay so the solid color is sRGB the wire frame around it is Adobe RGB so you can see how much bigger Adobe RGB really is in this 3d form um, all that space is color that you're losing if you are working in sRGB. And you gotta remember that once you're in sRGB, you cannot convert back to Adobe RGB. You can convert it, but it's not gonna regain those colors. Okay, so now let's take a look at sRGB versus Pro Photo RGB. Wow, that's crazy. So much color, so much different. And let's try the CMYK. This is the one we were using. So sRGB is this one. So CMYK is smaller, but it's bigger in these areas, like that cyan. Um, there's a bit of this yellow and orange up here where it comes out. Um, so this is also showing the sRGB is going to be, be able to show a lot of colors that CMYK cannot. So it's interesting that CMYK looked better on the actual prints. 
But now let's go all the way from Profoto RGB to CMYK. And you can't see anything. Maybe we should reverse those. Yeah, that's tiny. So those folks that were telling me and telling this other guy to print in CMYK, that's how much color they were losing. Pretty nuts. Um, so I wanna show you one other thing. This right here is the profile for the paper that I was using. It is Red River Ultra Pro Satin um, on my Epson P900. We're gonna go with the Ultra Pro Satin P900 versus a Profoto RGB. All right, so this is the limitation of that paper. All right, so the wireframe is Profoto RGB. So those are all colors that I can't print anyways. Now let's change that Adobe RGB. There's this one little bit right here and this one bit right here that comes outside of Adobe. So using this paper, you're gonna see that I can gain quite a bit of color, that the gamut is much wider using Profoto than Adobe. So there you go. I think I'm gonna agree with the uh, heavy hitters here and say Profoto RGB is the way to go. I don't think there's enough of a difference between the gamuts where there's gonna be a bunch of stuff that I'm not expecting to happen when I print that I can't see on my screen. So everything seems smoother and sharper and clearer and more detailed in Profoto RGB. So I'm going to stick with that for my printing. So those of you who have seen my other video, if you've been using Adobe RGB, don't freak out. I think there's very, 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 very few, very, very, very few papers that are gonna show you that much of a difference between the two, so you're fine. Feel free to switch to Profoto RGB. I don't know how many labs will take Profoto RGB. The standard on websites for, for print shops that I've seen is Adobe RGB, so I'm not really sure. Now, if you have any input on this, um, any disagreements, agreements, anything, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give the, the video a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks.